Welcome back to MVM. Today I have a Kickstarter preview of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice. This campaign style board game takes place in the Assassin's Creed universe. For those of you who are not familiar, this is a video game a cross media universe that uh, follows a group of assassins throughout the ages. So given the nature of this game and the fact that it is a campaign style game, there may be a few spoilers, at least mechanically speaking. I will not spoil the storyline, and in fact, everything you see set up here is not actually from one of the missions. I just put this out here so you'd get a good idea of how the game looks without actually having to uh, ruin any of the um, interesting story moments. If you'll take a look at the board out in front of me, you'll see the various components of the game. You'll have the game map, which is made up of variable tiles. Each scenario will tell you how to place these tiles. It will tell you how, where to put the starting uh, location, the objective tiles, where to put the enemies, and where to put the spawn tokens. Now, there might be more components introduced throughout the campaign. Uh, we've only had gotten the chance to experience the first four missions. So we haven't gotten to play through the entire campaign, which is going to feature 12. But this is what the game will look like for your first several missions. You've got your player board in front of you where you can hold items such as your hidden blades, swords, ranged weapons, armor, things like that will all be represented here on your player board, as well as your action point tokens and your health tokens uh, along the bottom. Over here, you have the guard track, which is going to tell you the active guards for the mission, tell you what can happen when you uh, synchronize at the top of the tower, and also AI cards that will tell you where the guards will move. Now, these AI cards here are going to change um, based on a certain gameplay aspects that we'll talk about in a minute. But basically, you're going to flip one of these over every turn and repopulate the board with more guards. In addition, you'll see over here the event deck. These events are going to take place every round, and they're going to uh, interfere with the gameplay a little bit, sometimes in your benefit, sometimes um, to negative. And then you're going to have equipment cards here, which you'll be able to use to equip to your characters and eventually sell and trade with merchants and things like that. Lastly, you're going to see a variety of different dice. Um, these dice will be custom printed for the, for the game and will be used for a variety of different things. Now, I should say that this game is obviously still in production. So you're going to see a lot of production samples uh, here in front of me. I know that these components are not final. Um, the miniatures are, so you'll get a very good idea of what the game is going to look like. Every assassin is going to be represented by miniatures as well as the different bosses and things like that. The game also comes with two rule books. One is for the actual rules and one is for the campaign. Now what's interesting about the way Assassin's Creed presents its campaign is that it actually takes you through the rules and teaches you the rules for the game while you're playing it. If you look on this board, you'll see these numbered tokens. What that's telling you is when you get to that spot, flip to that particular number in the rule book, it will introduce a new rule and it will tell you how to integrate that rule into your gameplay. The game gradually introduces new rules so that by the time you're through the prologue and into the like the heavier missions in the campaign, you're ready to hit the ground running with those. The game also features uh, a series of envelopes that hide important information that will be revealed as you get through the campaign. If you've ever played a legacy game or anything like that, you'll know the feeling of, of reaching into the box, pulling out these envelopes. They're going to have cards, they're going to have equipment, they're going to have items, um, anything um, like that that you need specifically for that campaign. There could even be new enemy types and new mechanics introduced through these envelopes. And like I said, there will be 12 um, scenarios, so there will be at least 12 envelopes like this in the final version of the game. I've got the four here for the first four missions that I've played. To start a new game, you'll open up the campaign book. It will give you a story segment, kind of telling you what's happening in the game. It will show you how to set up the board, where to place your minis and things like that, where to place the enemies. And then it will tell you to open one of the envelopes. So this is envelope number one, which is for the first mission of the game. Nothing too spoilery in here, but I'll give you kind of an example of what you're going to find. You're going to find a set of equipment cards that are handed out to all the players. You're going to find a setup card that gives you just a little bit more information on how to set up the board, what your objectives are, and what some of the uh, tokens that you put out on the board might mean. This also might have you flip to certain sections in the rules book to talk about new rules and introduce new mechanics through that as well. You're also going to find a variety of event cards. These event cards are going to get shuffled in. So no event cards get taken out. You just kind of build the event deck as you go. So some of those easier events, the ones that might be more beneficial to you, are going to get kind of watered down by some of the worst events the farther you go in the campaign. 
So you're going to set up the board, you're going to um, go through that card, and you're going to set up everything like it says, and then you're ready to play the game. So uh, we'll take a second and talk about how the actual game is played. So you'll take a look back at the board now that everything is kind of set up. You've got your event deck, your equipment deck, your dice pools. Everything is kind of set up the way it should be. You'll notice a couple things on the player board. First up here are your action cubes. Each assassin has three action cubes with a fourth spot that can be unlocked kind of through game progression. I won't spoil that at all. And then down here you have your health marker. Every assassin starts with two health, but certain armor that you're wearing can actually give you more health. When you lose all that health, you are knocked out of the game. So it's very important to have that health. And then you look out here on the game board. Now, uh, in the final version of the game, your assassins are going to have colored bases to represent whether or not they are exposed or hidden. The prototype component did not have them, so you're just kind of looking at um, a group of hidden assassins. Now, this game really uh, replicates that uh, feeling of sneaking around in Assassin's Creed. Now, remember, you are assassins, so unlike most of these dungeon crawl, um, dice chucking kind of games, you don't want to run in and just fight everybody uh, face to face. You'll probably lose. I mean, guards can get overwhelming pretty fast. And I'll explain to you the negative thing that can happen just by running, running in and fighting. However, the game is going to give you tons of items. Um, it's going to give you certain things you can do during event cards and ways to mitigate that. But basically, you're going to take a, uh, three different actions on your turn um, using these three different cubes. And you can do these actions multiple times. The first being move. You take your assassin figure and you move it one space. That's pretty simple. You can move up and down buildings, you can jump off buildings, you can climb to roofs, you can climb to these towers. You can also take off a cube to perform an action. These actions are um, like interacting with these tiles here that say they use a cube. Certain items like this hidden blade say that you have to use a cube. And there's a bunch of different uh, things that can be added on that you're going to use those cubes for. But basically it's interacting with objects, items that sit in front of you, equipment you have equipped, things like that. If you move into a space with a enemy, you're going to have to roll some dice to see if they detect you or not. If, the, uh, if there's no alert, meaning that this alert token you see here is blue, then you're going to roll these green dice. These green dice have two eye symbols on them. These eyes mean that you've been spotted. So you'll take a die, one die for every guard in the space you're moving to, and you'll roll that die. If you roll the eye, like I just did, you're spotted, the alarm turns from blue to red, which means now all the guards are alert. Now, once the guards have been alerted, everyone has to roll red dice when they're trying to sneak past guards, which are even harder. So there is a stealth element, but if you try um, to sneak past too many guards, there's a good chance you can uh, get spotted. Now, as in any good game, there are ways to mitigate those dice rolls, avoid making those dice rolls, re-rolling those certain dice, and things like that, so you're not just immediately caught, um, and it keeps the experience pretty thematic. So, a lot of the game is sneaking around trying to avoid being caught. Once you're caught, you'll take off that plastic base I was referring to, you'll leave it in that location, even if you move. So what you'll have is something like a red plastic base left behind. The guards will remember that being your last known location. If you're spotted somewhere else later, you'll take that base back, put it back under your mini, and, and now you'll know kind of where you are at that moment, right? So sneaking around, trying to lure the guards away, maybe peeking out at an opportune moment, it can be really beneficial to you. And the last thing you can do on your turn is just basically attack. And this is kind of like using an item. A lot of the items abilities let you attack, but when you attack, you're going to look at these white dice and you're going to roll them. They have a couple different things, uh, critical successes, regular successes, and then misses, which are blocked by the enemy. When you roll these dice, you calculate how much damage you do. Every enemy has a health total down here. As long as you do enough damage to that enemy, you will defeat them and you will tip them over sideways. Now, Leaving a body out like that can attract attention and it will let the guards know that maybe there are assassins in the area. You can also spend an action to hide the body, which actually takes them off the board. You hide them like in a hay barrel or somewhere where they won't be found by the other guards. When you do that, you get to draw an equipment card from looting the body. Now, these equipment cards are weapons, items, armor, things that might just sit in front of you. There are informants, um, allies, there are a ton of different types of cards in this equipment deck, 
There are even um, alert cards that will immediately rouse the guard's suspicion. Maybe they heard a noise or something when you were hiding that body. So these cards keep it pretty thematic. There's some story elements going on with these cards as well. Since this is a fully cooperative game, each player in turn can, and can spend their actions however they want. You can try to set up some combos and you can try to use those actions in the way that's best possible. Maybe one player can distract the guards while the other sneaks in and tries to assassinate them. Or maybe if you are getting into direct combat, you can decide which character has the best weapons or armor. Maybe they're the ones that are going to go in and initiate that combat. So you can take all your actions in any order. Once every player has taken all of their actions, the guards will act. Now, every event card that you play has a cardinal direction printed on it. This dictates according to the compass here where every guard is going to move. For, so for this uh, example, they're all going to move south. They'll move if there is an exposed assassin, meaning an assassin that has that red base on their, on their figure, meaning that they've been exposed already, they're going to get attacked. If you're still hidden, then you have to roll to make sure that you stay hidden. And if you stay hidden, nothing happens. But if you do get exposed, then you still get attacked. So guards are kind of searching for you, and that's what that's supposed to represent. After that, you'll reveal one of these cards, and you will place new guards on either A, B, C, or D based on if there is an alert or not. So you notice when there's no alert, guards just come at a smaller number. However, when you have that, that alarm going, guards are going to start pouring out to those different locations. So like I said, once you start that alarm, it gets tough to complete your objective. You really want to get in and get out without causing an alarm. A lot of the weapons, like you can fire guns and you can attack with swords and get into direct physical combat, that kind of thing sounds the alarm instantaneously. So you really are rewarded for sneaking around like an assassin using your daggers and hidden blades and things like that to catch people unaware. A game is going to continue like this back and forth with uh, the players all taking their actions, then the guards all taking their actions, then you're going to reveal a new event card, then you're going to go back into the gameplay. This is going to happen until one of two things uh, occur. Either all of the assassins are kidnapped or knocked out, in which case you lose the game. There are some options for kind of resetting and then restarting that um, scenario. However, if you manage to complete the objectives that are on the cards and escape out by returning to the start location, you'll win the object or you'll win that objective for the mission. Now, some missions have multiple objectives you have to complete. Some will give you a couple different options and say complete two of these three or one of these two objectives. Some will even have secret objectives. Some will have uh, what they call trophy objectives. So if you complete the alternate optional objective, you'll get bonus points. The game is even going to um, include a trophy system where you'll be able to award yourself these trophies for doing certain things in the game. And you're going to punch these out and keep them and be able to use them um, to track basically how well you've been doing in the game. And once you complete one of the campaign missions, you'll be able to save everything in one of the save boxes. You'll save all your equipment, all your character progression, uh, everything that you've got in your event decks, your equipment decks, the money you've collected throughout the game. It's all going to be saved for the next time you play. When you come back to the game, or if you just continue on in that same day, you'll flip to the next mission in the scenario book, you'll set it up, you'll open a new envelope, and this is going to take place over the course of 12 games. Over those 12 games, you're going to experience a storyline that, like I said earlier, I will not spoil it all for you, um, but it does feature characters from the Assassin's Creed games, memorable moments. Um, if you're a fan of the franchise, you're going to recognize a lot uh, going into this. If you're not, I think this is an interesting take on... Um, that kind of dungeon crawl mechanic without really being a dungeon crawl dice checking game. So there's a lot going on here. Again, you're looking at prototype com components here. So if you take a look at the Kickstarter page, you will see um, finalized miniatures. Again, we're really limited on what we can show here. Sorry if anybody felt there was too many spoilers, but like I said, everything here is uh, just the first couple of missions. So don't worry too much about that. As always, thank you for watching the show. Please like, follow us on Twitter, subscribe here on YouTube. Make sure you check out all of our new content and thank you for watching.